Today my guest is Rick Eldridge. You know, I love telling stories and uh, so I uh, started doing things that could really make a difference. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today my guest is Rick Eldridge. Welcome Rick. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, Rick is the president and CEO of Real Work Studios, which is a multifaceted film video post-production company in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, now you've been in the entertainment business for a long time. Tell us some of the things that you've done. Well, I over 30 years really through music first and then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I was asked to score a film, and um, you know that kind of got. I said, "Wow, you, can, you know, music and film and the media together." And so I, I evolved from that into uh, you know story editing and developing developing my own stories, and mm -hmm. and here we are today. But uh, it's some of the projects uh, I actually worked with Universal Studios and helped actually open Universal Florida oh, really? years ago and ran production on the back lot during those days and. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, sold the company and, and went through what I call my halftime experience, thanks to Bob Buford, uh, where I learned about you know success to significance, which is a lot of what this movie's about, and what are you doing that can really make a difference. And uh, you know I felt well, I've I've God's given me this great opportunity to meet a lot of people in our industry, and uh, you know I love telling stories, and uh, so uh, started doing things that could really make a difference, and. Uh, you know, along the way, I did a movie called Bobby Jones, Stroke of Genius, the golf movie, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, did some things. I have six children, so I uh, did some kids animation, did the Hermie and Friends series with Max Legato, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just did a, lot, a whole plethora of really over 100 products now that we put together, both in the general market theatrical film and mm -hmm. uh, an independent film. Uh, we did The Ultimate Gift a few years ago, and we're... Uh, Really blessed to see that uh, do well, you know, in, in basically every market, and uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's been an exciting project. And uh, Jim Stovall wrote a series of books, and uh, the ultimate gift came from the first book, and Ultimate Life is the second one. And, and, uh, and that's the movie that we're now talking we're finished about with right that. Now. Yeah, the, the Ultimate Life. That's right. Yeah. Well, um, the Ultimate Gift is. Um, is, is that considered like a holiday movie? You know, Hallmark picked up on that film, and, and it's yeah. been one of their top-rated holiday movies every mm -hmm. year. You know, Hallmark always does that between Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and Christmas holiday feature thing, and so our movie kind of became a staple there, which is, mm -hmm. is fun. It wasn't really written as a holiday movie, although mm -hmm. there's some Christmas elements, you know, in part yeah. of the script, but uh, because it's all about uh, giving and family and relationship and those kinds of things, and mm -hmm. the 12 gifts, I guess, that Red Stevens brings about, that that has mm -hmm. a little bit to do with Christmas. So uh, right. it kind of made its way there, which we, we love that. It's become mm -hmm. kind of a perennial holiday film. Yeah. Now, for anyone in our audience who's, who has not seen The Ultimate Gift, this really spoiled, rich kid ends up getting as the inheritance from his grandfather, a series of 12 tasks he has to do. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And if he if he doesn't succeed, he gets nothing. Mm -hmm. But if he does succeed, well, then he finds out what he's going to get, and we're right. not going to spoil the movie by telling. Well, it's like any any you know kid 22 years old who uh, is already very uh, materialistic about everything they have. It's like, well, you know, if I can get his money, I'll do anything, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we have reality shows where people will eat bugs for money, yeah. you know. <laughs> so, but along the way, uh, what does happen is he learns about the values and virtues of life mm -hmm. and learns that, as our byline says in both movies, uh, there are some things that are worth more than money. That's right. And he learns those things. And uh, at the end of the day, the ultimate gift is uh, is the ability to be able to manage a a uh, multi-billion dollar foundation that is uh, doing a lot of philanthropic things around the world and helping a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so he basically earns that privilege. What, what the gift, I, what I got from it is the gift that his grandfather leaves him is he gives him the gift of helping him develop character. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that correct? I think that's right in many, yeah. many ways. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And integrity and, you know, find friends and you yep. know, that was one of the gifts. Gift and of friends, that's right. Yeah, exactly. It, it's a movie I really, really enjoy. And mm. what's really nice is it it gives a scriptural message, a biblical message, 
and it isn't even preaching the gospel or mm. the Bible in any way, and yet you're getting a lot of biblical principles from it. So right. it, it works in the secular market as well. That's what we hoped. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I know that, that uh, there are a lot of filmmakers that take different directions to, to mm-hmm. tell their stories. Uh, you know, I, I uh, think about Jesus telling his parables, and I don't think he called them Christian parables. <laughs> they were stories that... Right. That were illustrations that that mm-hmm. led you to uh, to right. a, a solution, mm-hmm. uh, or at least a, a decision that you had to think about, you know, mm-hmm. and contemplate. And I try to do that in my stories. I try to make a film that can, you know, cause you to to, to challenge maybe how you think about things and uh, mm-hmm. look at things differently. Maybe to inspire you to do, to do something. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, I I really make films hopefully for the the full general market. Uh, mm-hmm but with a Christian worldview, because right. that's where I come from. Right, you know, exactly. So, so those, those virtues and values that uh, you, know, you could find scripturally in the Bible every day mm-hmm. uh, are built in. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're there. They're, they're in real life. Yeah. And you know, I'm not saying anything against films where the scriptures are talked about and where the gospel is spoken out. Mm-hmm. Clearly, I am absolutely for those. But yeah. there's also a place for the kind of movies that you make. Right. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I, and, and I, you know, it, it, there, there are many great filmmakers out there that, uh, that mm-hmm. we worked with over the years. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I love, uh, you know, I, I think of one film, uh, Courageous, which most people know, yes. you know a member of our family uh, who, uh, you know, was you know, very hard and fast, you know, in his ways about what he was going to do. That film just ripped his heart out mm-hmm. and changed his life, you yeah. know. And uh, absolutely, I you know I, I've bought probably a thousand copies of Courageous to give the people because it right. it ministers to people in, and in it that has way. the gospel in it. Absolutely, yeah. and and so uh, I think we all have a place, and I think that's all part of finding out mm-hmm. where's God put us and what's the platform that He's given us, and mm-hmm. how can we use that to really make a difference. That's right, and you know the Bible talks about planting seeds and others watering, and this could just be planting. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, maybe so. Yeah, it yeah, could be. Yes. Yeah, or maybe it's watering. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's. Yeah, I can tell you, we we've uh, really been blessed over the years with Ultimate Gift, mm-hmm. from over seventy countries that have aired the movie and uh, had the DVD out, and we get letters literally every week, you know, from mm-hmm. people that are all over the world that uh, will say things like, "This movie changed my life." And mm-hmm. when you dig deep into those stories, most times they're spiritual stories, mm-hmm. and they're stories of faith, and they're stories of just, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just refocusing and redirecting. Mm-hmm. And uh, boy, what a you know, that's that's the joy for me. You yeah. know, that's and what one it's of the about. things I really liked about that movie too is that it showed real life, real rotten people, without being rotten itself mm-hmm. you know you didn't have the bad language you didn't have any any you know distasteful scenes or right. anything well, thank you. Yeah. and you were able to, you were able to get across that these were mean greedy people <laughs> and and yet they didn't have to use bad language to get that across and well, I, I appreciated that well, thank you for that I, I i do think that you know in storytelling it's uh, you know it's always a challenge Mm-hmm. Uh, and and any pro- any project brings its own challenges, but mm-hmm. I always ask myself, you know, why am I doing what am I what I'm doing, and and mm-hmm. who is my audience that I'm trying to relate to, and uh, and those things have to meet up at some point, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm not going to put a gratuitous thing in just because, you know, right. uh, and most of the time when I ask myself why about something that I'm questioning, I wind up knocking it off, you know, I don't need it, you if know, if in doubt, don't, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about this new movie, The Ultimate Life. It's a sequel, I assume. It's a sequel and a prequel. And a prequel. Yeah, okay. well, because what happens, <clears throat> Jason is, um, now it's three years later, mm-hmm. he's running the foundation. His greedy family decides they're going to sue him for his inheritance, the American way. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so he's dealing with that. He's also dealing with his love interest with his, his wife, his his girl, Alexia, who he wants to be his wife. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, she's the one who lost her girl to cancer in The Ultimate Gift. And so she's seeing him really, you know, with a lot of the things that Red Stevens had, focusing so much on the drive of doing mm-hmm. well at what I do and maybe not focusing as much on her and their relationship. Right. So, uh, you know, we start the movie with uh, with this lawsuit happening and, then uh, she decides, you know, I'm, I've got to get away. I've just got, you know, I'm still, you know, still not over my daughter and mm-hmm. our relationships, you know, we're not spending a lot of time together. I've just got to get away. 
she's a nurse, so she decides to take a Doctors Without Borders kind of a mm. assignment in Haiti. And so mm-hmm. you know, here it is, he's, he's uh, you know, potentially losing the foundation, potentially losing the girl. And and uh, so he, he goes to Hamilton, who was Red Stevens, Bill Cobbs plays the character of mm-hmm. Hamilton and says, uh, she's gone and, and what am I going to do? And uh, at this point, uh, he pulls out a journal and he says, nobody knows that this journal exists, but this is the journal of Red Stevens. And there's messages and there's lessons in here that, that uh, will help you with your past and with your present and probably even your future. Mm-hmm. And so he literally just dives into that journal. And then our story dives into that journal. And we're in 1941. Uh-huh. And we have a young Red Stevens who is 15 years old. And uh, it's a uh, post-depression era, mm-hmm. and uh, he's uh, you know beginning to you know find out where he's going to go. And the first entry in the journal is, "I'm tired of being poor," mm-hmm. and uh, and he begins his drive to make a billion dollars. Uh, and we see him, you know, how he be- how he becomes successful. We see the lessons that he learns, both good and bad, you know, mm-hmm. the people that he meets and the things that he runs into. But uh, that really leads us up to uh, you know. What becomes at the end of the movie, uh, as we see Jason's been in the journal all night, and uh, you know we find that the journal actually, in the stories of Red Stevens, again, his grandfather, you know, through the journal, again, <clears throat> teaches him some life lessons. Mm-hmm. And so he changes his uh, direction a little bit, uh, you know, re- recompasses and where he's going to go, and uh, goes and gets his girl, and, you know, th- those kinds of things begin to happen. There's so much to the story, but... Uh, Having the uh, you know the the 50s and the 40s and the 60s with all the cars and the music, it's just a, a fabulous time, and we had a lot of fun making it, and yeah. uh, some great stories there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, why do you think film is so powerful? Well, I, we we talked about this earlier. I think Jesus spoke in parables because people mm-hmm. relate to stories. Mm-hmm. You know, you can kind of put yourself in a story, maybe, and what mm-hmm. would I have done in that situation or whatever. But uh, I think story really, it, it's an emotional ride. It's a roller coaster. You laugh and you, mm-hmm. you, you're maybe, you know, even convicted by something. And, mm-hmm. and, and certainly, uh, you know, through the process of story, you, uh, you identify with it and you, you, you become part of it. And uh, I can't tell you how many times I've walked out of a theater and I've just, you know, I've, I've, you know my emotions are just so caught up into what I've just seen mm-hmm. that it takes a while to, 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 to really you know find my bearings again mm-hmm. uh, so it has a dynamic effect on people I think media does in general mm-hmm. but uh, specifically film and storytelling the right way so mm-hmm. um, do you think music the background music plays a part in that it definitely does we uh, you know we have a, a phenomenal score uh, the Seattle Symphony uh, you know worked mm-hmm. with with us on the score for this particular film with Mark McKenzie who was our composer, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, the, it creates the emotion and the uh, you know the the backdrop for what takes place in the film, and uh, we have several songs in the film that kind of you know lead you in different directions based on the lyrics and the music and the style mm-hmm. of the music, and of course the period music that we have uh, you know really does that too. You you're immediately in that era when you hear the the jazz of the '40s or mm-hmm. you know that kind of a thing. So it's a yeah. very big em- emotional roller coaster, if you will, and. Uh, and that's all part of the storytelling process. It's the sound design, it's the music, it's the acting, it's, it's mm-hmm. the whole process. It's quite mm-hmm. fascinating. Yeah. Love it. So even now you're fascinated by it? You know, I'm so privileged to do what I do. You know, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's great to be able to, to tell stories that can make a difference. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know I'm, I'm actually creating, you know, legacies every time I do something like that, that, you know, Hopefully my kids will pass along you know, along the way, but uh, kind of like more, Red Stevens it's, passing it's, on a it's legacy. It's pretty neat. Yeah, it's yeah. I, I'm really privileged and I'm honored to be able to to have the chance to do what I do. I, I love what I do, and uh, mm-hmm. you know it, it uh, allows me to really sink my whole life into it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, my wife, uh, you know, is just so supportive too because it's a lot of time away, mm-hmm. and uh, but it's it's great to have a, a family that uh, we share this together, and so it's great. That's good. Tell me a little bit about how you got involved with the Hermie series. Well, Hermie, I've, I've done, of course, I have six children, so um, uh, I have a great little focus group right there. And uh, <laughs> uh, But we, uh, we've we been involved in a lot of animation. I did a lot of work at Disney years ago, too, so mm-hmm. I've always loved you know kids programming anyway. Mm-hmm. And Thomas Nelson, who I'd done some other projects with, uh, brought mm-hmm. me this little Max Licato book. When we got the book and looked at it, it's uh, about this... Uh, little worm that becomes a butterfly and it's a coming of age story and he's in the garden and 
you know, he messes up, and then it's like, God, I messed up again, and God forgives him and tells him what to do, and then he goes about his way. So we created a 3D animation with this, and we brought in some kind of unusual actors for the Christian community, maybe. We had Tim Conway and Don Knotts play the Hermie and Wormy characters, mm-hmm. and, uh, and the series just really caught on. I think, you know, uh, having Don and Tim involved didn't hurt at all, but... Uh, yeah. You know, it, it was kind of funny. We did the first episode, and it did very well. It sold very, very well. So I got this call from Tommy Nelson uh, and the Thomas Nelson Kids Division, and they said, Rick, we got to do more of these. You know, this thing's just, you know, it's our number one seller. And so we have a problem. You know, Hermie was a butterfly, and butterflies die in about two weeks. And uh, he was a worm, and he became a butterfly. So every other episode's a prequel. It's all it's all in the garden, the episodes of Hermie and, uh, and the family in the garden. Yeah. But we made 17 of them. And wow. uh, it was just uh, great stories, and, and there, we're still kind of repackaging, repurposing those because, mm-hmm. you know, the beauty of kids programming like that is it's timeless. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, every four or five years, we got a new audience. <laughs> so <laughs> That's true. That's great. That's true. Yeah. Well, where can people find you online? Is, is there some way they can connect with you and yes, find out the, about uh, the movie yeah, coming The up? movie is uh, just theultimatelifemovie.com, okay. and uh, our studio is uh, realworksstudio. Dot com and real works is like the film real two e's r e e l w o r k s and mm-hmm. uh, so they can uh, read about what we're doing there on realworksstudios.com uh, dot com okay. uh, and uh, most importantly our ultimate life movie will be in theaters September the sixth and uh, they can go online and look at some of the sites some of the behind the scenes we've got a, a lot of behind the scenes features and kind of see okay. the making of as well as the trailer and some other pieces that will be okay. there through uh, through the release. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being our guest. It was great having you. Well, thank you. It was great to be here, and I appreciate you allowing me to share. Mm-hmm.